everyone. My name is Mirvat al Asnaj, and I'm an interventional cardiologist practicing in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. With me today is Giuseppe Gargiulio. He's an assistant professor of cardiology in the uh, Department of Advanced Biomedical Sciences in the University of Federico of Naples. Today, we're going to be discussing one of the late breaking clinical trials at ESC this year that was presented earlier today RTC radial versus femoral axis for coronary procedures. Joseph, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Mirmat, for having me here, and thanks to PCR Online for these important initiatives. I am really happy to contribute. Now, randomized trials have demonstrated the superiority of transradial access in terms of hard endpoints like mortality. In fact, the guidelines have reflected these findings and upgraded transradial access to class one recommendation for STEMIs in 2017. Does your meta-analysis examine all PCIs or acute coronary syndrome cases only? Thank you for this important question. As you said, in 2017, STEMI guidelines gave a 1A recommendation for preferential use of transradial over transfemoral. In most recent ESC guidelines on NSDACS in 2020 did the same recommendation. This year, also American guidelines on coronary artery revascularization were released. And in these guidelines, you find again a recommendation 1A. But importantly, this is for both acute and chronic coronary syndromes. These recommendations reflect the evidence that transradial is associated with lower access side major bleeding, vascular complications, shorter hospitalization, and higher patient quality of life. While they cautiously acknowledge the possible favorable impact of transradial uh, access on mortality, and for this, they quote the main trial in which this endpoint was significantly reduced uh, with the transradial access that was the matrix, the matrix trial. Uh, they also quote a, a study level meta-analysis, uh, including more than 22,000 patients, uh, showing a significant reduction of mortality. But this meta-analysis included 13 studies seen, that were single-centered. 19 studies that were performed more than one decade ago. It, it did not include most recent trials such as the Safari stem. So uh, the evidence on survival benefit associated with transradial is still contrasting and not yet conclusive. This is why five years ago, we decided to start this important project of performing an individual patient data meta-analysis we included randomized trials with patients undergoing cardiac catheterization with or without PCI. The final population included 21,600 patients from seven uh, trials, of whom 95% were ACS, 80% were acute MI, and 75% received PCI. So could you... Um you know, briefly describe the methodology of the meta-analysis you presented today. How did you select the relevant randomized trials for this meta-analysis? Yes, sure. As I said, the main aim of the radial trialist collaboration that I'm representing here was to focus on our cause mortality. And as you know, some meta-analysis were already being performed, suggesting a survival benefit. However, study level meta-analysis lack of granularity and cannot resolve this uncertainty because of between and the intra-study heterogeneity in patients, operator skill, pharmacotherapy, and other factors. On the contrary, IPD meta-analysis allow to overcome this limitation. Uh, for this reason, we decided to identify large-scale, high-quality contemporary multicenter trials with available 30-day or post-mortality outcome. Differently from the past, however, we decided to select available trials by applying some restrictions. Specifically, we restricted our search to multicenter trials in order to enhance external validity. Trials with more than 100 patients per hour in order to minimize small study effect. 
and trials published uh, before 2005 were excluded in order to have more contemporary invasive uh, practice in terms of stent technology, for example, second generation BES, operator experience with the radial axis, revascularization technique, and antithrombotic uh, drugs. So we finally identified seven trials, which were color, Matrix, Rifle State CS, Rival, Safari STEM, Safe PCI for Women, and STEMI Radial uh, Trials. All the PIs agreed to contribute to the IPD meta analysis. Oh, that's really interesting, actually, and yes, certainly very relevant uh, and contemporary trials that were involved here. So, what were the most important results from your meta analysis? Thank you. Uh, we found that transradial access significantly reduced the risk of mortality and major bleeding as compared with the transfemoral access. Specifically, we observed in the primary analysis a 27% relative risk reduction of mortality with a 0.5 of absolute risk reduction and the number needed to treat for benefit of 214. Regarding major bleeding, there was a 45% uh, percent relative risk reduction with a 1.2% of absolute risk reduction and the number needed to treat for benefit of 84. The survival benefit was confirmed in a series of secondary analyses, like a two-stage analysis, um, the per protocol and the treated analysis, as well as the restriction to the population with PCI, ACS, and acute MI. Yet we also did a multivariable model in which transradial access was independently associated with uh, a significant 24% relative risk reduction of 30 day or cause mortality, therefore supporting the strength of this finding. There was also strong evidence for reductions of the composite endpoints of maize and maize that were guided by mortality and major bleeding reductions, of course, because MI, stroke, and stent thrombosis did not differ between the two groups. Transradial access was also associated with significant reduction of vascular complications, access site bleeding, blood transfusion, and hospital length while on the contrary, crossover rate was higher in the transradial group. At predefined subgroup analysis, we confirmed that the benefit observed in the transradial group uh, was consistent across majority of pre-specified subgroups, with one ex exception, which was um, uh, the significant baseline anemia which was defined by hemoglobin levels below 11, according to the definition by the RKHBR. We observed that patients with significant baseline anemia had a greater survival benefit, which reached a 65% relative risk reduction of mortality. And finally, we performed also a mediation analysis to explore the mechanistic link among access site, major bleeding, and all cause mortality. This analysis demonstrated an, in the, an, um, demonstrated an uh, indirect casual relationship between access site and all cause mortality, mediated by major bleeding, but also revealed that this effect accounts only for a limited proportion of the survival improvement associated with transradial access. Well, these are actually very interesting um, findings, which sort of, you know, reconfirm what we've been uh, hoping to find um, and, and, you know, five-year outcomes that you've been collecting. Did you notice any sex differences in the meta-analysis? Did women, outcomes in women differ any significantly from those in men? Oh, thank you for this question. You, you know better than me that sex disparity is a matter of great debate because women are often underrepresented in randomized trials. In our meta-analysis, one of the trials, specifically the uh, safe PCI for women, was specifically focused on women. And in the overall population, we had 32% of women, reaching approximately 7,000 patients. 
In the main analysis uh, we are going to present to ESC 2022, we also performed an exploratory subgroup analysis for both co-primary endpoints. And we found that there was a negative interaction p-value between treatment effect and sex for both outcomes, indicating the, therefore that the benefits of transradial access in terms of mortality and measured bleeding applied to all the patients irrespective of sex. In the setting of access site selection, this is in my opinion, a very reassuring finding considering that there is evidence that female patients have increased periprocedural bleeding risk and vascular complication when compared with men and also have anatomic peculiarities such as smaller radial arteries that are more prone to spasm, as well as shorter uh, aortic root than men, which may generate challenges and uh, undermine the efficacy of radial axis. You know, this is actually a good segue to my next question, which is about access and non-access site bleeding. Um, some studies, such as the matrix antithrombotic trial that was evaluated the role of bivalirudin in ACS, um, reported a 47% relative risk reduction in non-access site bleeding with transradial and a 39% relative risk reduction in BARC-3 and 69% relative risk reduction in BARC-5 bleeding, um, including non-access site bleeding for transradial compared with transfemoral. So in your opinion, what accounts for that? Yeah, thank you. This is a very important point. So um, in that case, we are referring to um, the effect of a drug by valirudine uh, showed to be superior to unfractionated heparin, and this reduction was found to be independent of access site selection. It was mainly guided by uh, non-access site bleeding. This explains uh, uh, with the systemic effect of the drug. On the contrary, in matrix access, uh, transradial access reduces uh, reduced measured bleeding and did it exclusively through a reduction of access site bleeding. In our meta-analysis, we observed that transradial access significantly reduced measured bleeding with various definition used, so including BARC 3 or 5, uh, as you said. We also explored the access site and non-access site bleeding, demonstrating that transradial access significantly reduced access site bleeding only with a NODS ratio of 0.37, so 63 percent relative risk reduction and a 1.8 absolute risk reduction from 3.0 in the femoral group to 1.2 in the transradial group, but similar non-access site bleeding were observed, 2.2 percent in both groups. We also observed that transradial significantly reduced blood transfusion and access site bleeding requiring blood transfusion. But again, no differences were observed in non-access site bleeding requiring transfusions. Well, thank you. And, and it is reassuring as an operator to know that radial access is protective because now we're using more aggressive antithrombotic agents in the cath lab and so on. But you know, at the end of the day, do you really think we still need a comparison between transradial and transfemoral, particularly after that the, the guidelines have already been updated? And, and you know, the reason I ask you that is the Safari STEMI trial in 2019 noted that in patients with STEMI referred for primary PCI, there was no difference in survival at 30 days between the use of radial and femoral access. Um, but the investigators suggest that adequately trained operators should be able to achieve similar results using either radial or femoral. So, you know, the experience of operators, what are your thoughts there then? Yes, yes, sure. I think that finally our study provides support for guideline recommendations. So um, guidelines should not be uh, further updated. Simply they have now uh, additional evidence for those recommendations. Our meta-analysis included the Safari STEM as well as other negative trials in terms, in terms of mortality. But, but our overall finding was a clear survival benefit with transradial access. You know, individual endpoints such as mortality, even not so frequent like mortality, require large samples that generally single trials cannot include to be 
properly powered and to reach appropriate conclusions. Safari Semi is for sure an important contemporary trial uh, that we waited for. Indeed, we, uh, in 2018, we had already completed our analysis. And when we became aware that Safari Semi had been interrupted for futility and was going to be presented at uh, ACC uh, 2019, then it took a bit of time to reach its publication and for us to obtain individual patient data. Uh, in the meanwhile, also the call of trial was published and we decided to include uh, also this one. As far as I know, there are no current large trials ongoing to test mortality between transradial and transfemoral. And I believe that our data are conclusive on this issue and will represent an important evidence to support the guideline recommendation. What I think remains to be fully clarified in the future um, is the mechanism, because we observe that major bleeding reduction is only a part of the effect. And we hypothesize that acute kidney injury might play an important role, as suggested by previous analysis from the matrix trial. But actually, this will require further studies. Uh, thank you, Joseph. I just have one final question for you, and, and it keeps coming up. From the meta-analysis, is there any truth to the Campo radial paradox, whereby the benefits extracted from default radial is offset by a paradoxical increase in femoral complications, especially in those with little transfemoral experience? Yeah, thank you. This is a very interesting and debated topic. This is one of the reasons probably why some people have questioned the survival benefit of transradial axis. I will give you two answers. The first one is my opinion. And my opinion is no, I do not think this is currently applicable. As you know, and you did a very nice and elegant uh, article on that, this year we celebrate the 13th anniversary of transradial axis. But uh, also the 20th birthday of TAVI. And you will know that in the last 15 years, TAVI has exploded and we have learned a lot on how to carefully manage large bore femoral axis to prevent complications. Yet in contemporary cat labs, we do several peripheral structural interventions. And today we use more frequently mechanical support devices. So even if we perform 90, 95% or even greater percentage of transradial PCI, in my opinion, it is hard to believe that we are not trained anymore to transfemoral access. The second answer will be based on our data. We did an exploratory subgroup analysis based on the percentage of center volume of radial PCI. And after adjustment for multiplicity to minimize the false positive risk, we did observe a negative interaction p-value, indicating that the center volume did not generate heterogeneity in the mortality analysis. But uh, I have also to admit that this data is still preliminary. For sure, we will further investigate it in more detail. So we cannot be conclusive on this and we cannot exclude an effect of center operator volume. For sure, expertise is always um, an important point. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Um, certainly exciting data that you presented um, at ESE. Um, and really very encouraging to see that you've done several meta some, several analyses on radial versus transfemoral. You looked into sex differences, you looked into operator volume and center volume experience, and you certainly looked into uh, some of the hard endpoints that matter the most uh, besides bleeding. So thank you everybody for being with us here on PCR online, and we'll see you again on another episode. Thank you, Mirma. And again, thank you to PCR online. And let me conclude with a special thanks to all the members of the Radial Trialist Collaboration, in particular to the chair and my mentor, Professor Marco Valgini. Thank you and see you in Barcelona.